can move to the second talk of the session entitled Beetle Family of Lightweight and Secure Authenticated en Encryption Ciphers. The paper is by Avik Chakraborty, uh, Nilanjan Data, Mirnul Nandi, and Kandia Suda. And Avik is giving the talk. Uh, thanks, François, for the introduction. So, uh, I'm Ovik Chakraborty. Uh, so, I'm Ovik Chakraborty from NTT Secure Platform Laboratories. So, today I'm going to present the family of lightweight and secure authenticated encryption ciphers, named as Beetle. And this work has been jointly done with Nilanjan Datta, Midul Nandi, and Khan Yasuda. So, uh, I, will, I have divided my presentation into five parts. In the first part, I will briefly give the prerequisites for, to understand our contribution. In the second part, I will give some motivation behind our design. In the third part, I will give a specification for Beetle. In the fourth part, I will uh, describe uh, briefly about the hardware implementation results for Beetle. And finally, I will, co I will conclude my talk. So, Beetle is an authenticated encryption cipher, family of authenticated encryption cipher. So, an authenticated encryption cipher is actually a symmetric key based encryption scheme, uh, which has two algorithms uh, encryption and decryption. The the encryption takes a secret key, a message, a nonce, and an associated data, and it outputs a tagged ciphertext. So here, tagged ciphertext means a ciphertext and a tag pair, where this C pro provides the uh, privacy of the data and T provides the authenticity of the data. And there is a corresponding decryption function, which, which takes a secret key, which takes a tagged ciphertext, takes a nonce, takes an associated data, and outputs the message if the ciphertext matches the tag, and otherwise it will reject. So, uh, as we can see, uh, it, it, it's different from normal encryption, and it uses two additional uh, types of data, which is nonce, which is an arbitrary number, which is used only once for each encryption. So, you can visualize, uh, you can visualize it as, a, as the initialization vector, like, for example, counters. And there's another type of data called associated data, which is actually the data about the data transmission. So, you can think it of as a header of the message. So, uh, for example, like IP address of the sender, IP address of the receiver, or MAC address for some devices. And uh, now the question comes, why authenticated encryption? Well, there are several applications where we, where we need both confidentiality and privacy of our data. Like, uh, for example, uh, suppose a doctor wishes to send a medical, some medical information about Alice, then Alice may not want to disclose her medical records. And in that case, we need privacy over Alice's records. And you also want integrity to ensure that the person who is sending the information to the database is actually the doctor, and the information has not been modified in transit. So for this type of applications, authenticated encryption is the most convenient one. Now for the security, so for privacy, we need int CPS security, which is very standard. For integrity, we need int CTXT, which stands for integrity of cipher text. So here, the cipher text is uh, integrated with, with the tag, so that's why the term in CTXT. And uh, overall, we need in CPS security and in, cyber, in CTXT security both from the same construction. Okay. Now, uh, this is a unified A security model. So, uh, and, and uh, in, in addition to the standard oracles, we also give the adversary some uh, additional oracle called uh, public random permutation oracle. And this, this is called random permutation model. Unified A security under random permutation model. So here we assume that the adversary A runs in time t, uh, and uh, here A makes QE encryption queries with total number of sigma E encryption blocks to the encryption oracle. It makes QD forging attempts or with sigma D number of forged blocks to the decryption oracle. And in addition, it gets access to one public random permutation, and it queries to A for F inverse. And, uh, and the number of queries, we assume it's bounded by QF, and we simply call this oracle as F plus minus. Now, uh, to calculate the authenticated encryption, we assume that the, in the real world, the adversary gets F plus minus oracle, encryption oracle, and decryption oracle. And in the ideal world, it gets F plus minus one oracle. It gets random oracle, which always returns a random string, and a rejection oracle, which, which always rejects the query. And uh, when we calculate the advantage, so the expression is pa parameterized by QE, QF, QD, and sigma E, sigma D, and time T. And it is taken over. It is taken as the maximum over the advantage values of uh, all the adversaries. Now I'm coming to the motivation behind our design. So uh, in the past few years, uh, a lot of attempts have been done to make some to get some standardized authenticated encryption ciphers. 
And uh, nowadays, uh, the applications are becoming more lightweight. They, they need more light. They are using more lightweight devices. So there is a huge requirement for some lightweight authenticated encryption schemes. So recently, NIST has uh, proposed a lightweight cryptographic uh, competition, and they are trying to get some uh, standard lightweight designs, which is uh, lightweight as well as highly secure. In and in addition, there they also need some other properties. So we have taken up the challenge, and uh, we wanted to uh, construct an authenticated encryption mode, which should be very light, which should provide sufficient security level, and it should have a better area security trade-off among all the existing designs. Now, uh, there are several ways of designing uh, authenticated encryption modes. So one, one can be block cipher based, can be stream cipher based, or can be permutation based. So permutation based mode has been evolved with the designing of the sponge mode. and. Uh, and we thought the uh, best choice should be sponge-based construction, sponge-based mode, because it, uh, we believe it's an it's a all-in-one construction, so not only authenticated encryption, we can also get hashing, hashing mode. And in, in addition, it, it only uses the permutation state. It, it, it only uses storage for storing the permutation state, and it does not have any additional storage. So here we have taken up, uh, we, we have chosen a sponge-based AE mode, which is a sequential nonce-based AE mode. It uses a B-bit uh, state permutation, and we divide the permutation into two state into two parts. The first R part is called uh, the first R bit part is called rate, and the second C, last C bit part is called the capacity, where B equal to R plus C. Now, when the data so this mode actually processes the data through the first R bit part, and it is a feedback based mode. So the data is processed through the first R bit part, and it is feedback to the next permutation call, and the last C bit C bit part is directly feedback to the next permutation call. So this is a picture of, uh, of the first sponge mode. So it has been introduced as a hash mode with Kechak hash function, which is a SHA-3 winner. And, it has, uh, uh, and, and later, it has been accepted in Eurocrypt 2013. So uh, we can see that uh, why it's sponge mode, because it has, just like sponge, it has two parts. One is absorbing part, and the squeezing phase. So in the absorbing phase, it just absorbs the message, message blocks. Just, just sponge absorbs the water, absorbs water. So it's, it just absorbs message, message blocks. And the squeezing part, it squeezes the public digest, hash digest. Okay. So, and uh, later, the designers of Kechak, they have also designed one sponge-based A scheme, uh, which is called sponge A, and it works in a, a something called duplex mode. Now, what is duplex mode? Uh, so in, the, in Kechak, we are processing the data first, and then we are releasing the hash, uh, the digest. But here, we will process one data block and release, uh, squeeze one uh, output block. Then next data block, next output block, and so on. So it works in a, in a uh, uh, duplexing manner. And, uh, and, uh, and the security for sponge-based AE has been uh, proven to be, uh, uh, has been proven to have C by 2-bit AE security. Now, uh, later, uh, Jovanovic et al., they have uh, uh, taken up this problem, and they have tried to increase the security level of uh, minimum of B by 2 comma C bit AE security for this duplex sponge, and they have achieved it, but they have some inconvenient assumption that the number of decryption blocks is bounded by 2 to the power c by 2, which we found it's very uh, impractical because normally we always uh, give the uh, adversary to make a forge squared, forging attempts as, as much as possible. So essentially it has uh, c by 2 bit security. And uh, now we have taken up this challenge, and, we've, uh, and, and actually the main difficulty of this sponge mode is that cipher text is directly injected as a feedback to the next permutation call. So the adversary can easily control the feedback to the next permutation by controlling the cipher text blocks during the decryption queries. So, and this, this property actually, actually resists the designers to, prove, to have a proof more than C by 2 bit security. So now we, 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 have, we thought that can we, stop the, uh, can we stop that and increase the security level by adding some simple tweaks in the design, which does not have much overhead? So the answer is yes. So the answer is coming in the next section. So this is the design of Brittle. Uh, this, this is some, some information about Brittle. So uh, normally, in, 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 in tradition, we, uh, for a, to design a feedback-based A scheme, we use message feedback or cipher text feedback or output feedback. But here, we, we, we observe that if we use a combined feedback, then we can up the security level. So what combined feedback is? Like uh, in message cipher text or output feedback, the message block or cipher text block or the output block, re block respectively, they can compute the next feedback. But in, in combined feedback, we need at least two of them. So they cannot compute the uh, feedback individually. We need at least two of them. 
And this actually uh, resists the adversary to control the XI, the next feedback, by uh, encryption or decryption queries. So this concept has been introduced in COFB last year in chess. And uh, this is the picture. So this message feedback, ciphertext feedback, and output feedback. And this is the combined feedback, where we generate the next feedback by using a G matrix. And essentially, we generate the ciphertext by using the identity matrix. That means the output from, from R is multiplied with identity matrix and added with M to generate C. And output from R is multiplied with G matrix and added with M to generate XI. So this G no, is not equal to I. So this, this property makes it a combined feedback mode. So if G is equal to I, then it will become ciphertext feedback mode. Now, uh, uh, now BIT will use a combined feedback in the first R bit because the data is processed to the first R bit. And uh, it needs uh, it, it need to store only a B bit state for storing the permutation. So and then each permutation output is processed with the message block using a combined feedback row. And uh, here this is the combined feedback. X is the next feedback. C is the ciphertext. The row is the combiner. And uh, here X is influenced by both Y and M. And uh, it has high security bound due to this feedback function, and it is hard to force. Now this is the picture of Bittle. So here, the nonce and the key is injected to the permutation state, and then the associated data is processed using these combiners, and it generates an intermediate value. And this intermediate value is again processed with the message blocks and the permutation outputs with the combiner to generate ciphertext with the identity matrix, and the next feedback with the G matrix. And uh, finally, it outputs a tag. So it's a very simple design, and uh, we use some constant value here and here to make a domain separation. So, and constant uh, m is, uh, is 1 if it's a full block, the last block is a full block, and it is 2 if the last block is not full. So, uh, these are choice of the combiner. So, here x, x and c is generated by row into y, row of y and m. So, so, here x is actually row 1 of y m, which is actually g into y plus m, and uh, c is just uh, xor, so c into i into y plus m. And we need both g and g plus i as a full rank matrix, not equal to i. Because in the decryption, we need to compute x using c by using g plus i matrix. So we need both g, g and g plus i as full rank and not equal to i. And uh, this distinction between g and i makes, uh, makes it a combined feedback mode. And now uh, this, the choice of g is very simple. It's like 0, 1, 1, uh, 0 identity, identity, identity. So it is uh, very easy to implement. It's just a r by 2 bit left shift and one r by 2 bit xor. So it's very efficient. Now we recommend two versions for Brittle, for Brittle family, like one is Brittle Lite Plus, which, is, uh, which aims to be lightweight, and one, another is Brittle Secure Plus, which, which aims to have higher security level, and also it has some lightweight property. Now for Brittle Lite, Lite Plus, the choice of F is P144 permutation, described in for photon hash function, with the state size 144, rate 64, and capacity 80. And for Brittle Secure Plus, we use P256 permutation from photon hash function, with uh, state size 256 and both rate and capacity 128. So uh, when we try to prove, uh, when we prove the security of this design, we assume that uh, it, uh, we assume the proof uh, uh, under nonce respecting adversary, where the adversary do not repeat the nonce for the encryption queries, and we have uplift the security level to minimum of b by 2, c minus log r, and r. So I forgot to mention that the tag size is r bit, so definitely uh, uh, r should be there. Now, tag size can be anything, actually. But for our design, we hard-coded it as R bit. So for Beetle Lite Plus, it has R bit, uh, R is equal to 64. So it has 64-bit uh, security. And Beetle Secure Plus, C minus log R. Uh, C and R, both of, both of them are 128. So it has C minus log R, 121-bit security. And uh, when we make comparative study with the sponge AE mode, so we can uh, observe that when the state size is B, then it, it, uh, it has a much higher security level than sponge A. So uh, finally, so it has very low state size of B, B bit. It has very flexible mode. We can fit any permutation here. It is inverse free, so we do not need to compute F inverse for the decryption. It's a, it uses a very simple linear feedback combiner. And uh, it is very lightweight and consumes low hardware area. And uh, the limitation is that both the encryption and decryption is com are completely serial. So if we want to gain something, we have to lose something. So now I'm coming to the hardware implement uh, implementation results of Beetle. So, so it's a CPB analysis for Beetle Lite Plus. So for Beetle Secure Plus, it is same. 
So we, we assume A block AD and M block message, where each, each block is 64-bit block, that is 8-byte blocks. And the cycle count is uh, 13 into A plus M plus 12, because P144 round, runs for 12 rounds. And in this calculation, we assume A equal to M, and uh, finally we get this is the CPB value. And when the size of M increases, the length of M increases, it becomes negligible. So it is essentially, it, uh, it is converged to 3.25. So this is the base architecture for Brittle Light Plus. So it is again same for Brittle Secure Plus, except the data path lengths. So it just uses one state register of size 144. It uses three modules. So it is a round-based implementation, very basic round-based implementation. So this F round module is actually one round of the F permutation. This row comp is the linear combiner. And this con addition, uh, con XOR is the constant addition. And uh, we have uh, some other signals to control the circuit. Now, uh, regarding the base architecture of Brittle Light Plus, it, uses, uh, it does serial processing of data. It does round-based architecture of photon P144 permutation. It processes one 64-bit uh, block per 12 clock cycles. It uses a very low storage register, with, uh, which is only, only B bit, and it, is, it has the minimum hardware area among all the known implementations. Now, this is the FPGA implemented results for Brittle Light Plus. So we can observe that both uh, Vertex 6 and 7, it uh, achieves a very low number of LUTs and slices. And, other, and on the other hand, it has very competitive value for area efficiency ratio. And this for Brittle Secure Plus, so it is uh, heavier than Brittle Light Plus, but still it achieves a competitive uh, hardware footprint and a good uh, uh, area efficiency ratio. And this is the, uh, this is some benchmarking of Brittle Light Plus with the existing lightweight designs. And we can found that Brittle Light Plus has uh, much lighter, uh, Brittle Light Plus is much lighter than the other designs and it has a higher area efficiency ratio. But we want to admit that this design does not follow Caesar API. So when we implement Brittle Light Plus in Caesar API, it will have some overhead. Okay. So, but, but still, still we have very, very good result. So even if it has overhead, uh, we, we believe it can beat all the other implementations. So this is the uh, benchmarking of Brittle Secure Plus with the existing sponge constructions with the equivalent security level. So we can observe that it has better LUT and slices than the other designs, and it has a uh, good uh, value for uh, any efficiency ratio. Yeah, so finally I, will, I would like to conclude. So it's a permutation-based AI mode. Uh, we just secure high, high security level of minimum of B by two, comma C minus log R and R. And it has low area, it is a low area authenticated encryption family, and uh, it can be used very efficiently in low, low resource embedded devices. And thanks a lot. So we have time for one quick question, if any. Maybe one, one quick, can you comment like in terms of state size, for example, compared to a block cipher based solution? Uh, pardon? In terms of state size, yeah. which is important in the lightweight con context, uh, compared to a solution based on block ciphers, like in the previous talk, how does it compare? So actually for sponge construction, it is, it is actually better than block cipher based constructions because in case of block cipher based construction, we need, to store, we need to also store the key, not only the state. So, but here we do not need to store the key. So uh, mainly the block cipher based AE are, uh, the state size for block cipher based AE, they are represented in, in only the state size, only on the state size, but actually we need to add the key also. So here we do not need to add any key. So it is much lighter than block cipher based constructions. Okay. Thank you. We can thank the speaker again.